the exact location on earth Jesus will return to. Where will Jesus return? One of the most significant inquiries in Christianity is about the timing of Jesus' return. The current state of the world, as seen on the evening news, reinforces the need for the risen Savior to come back. Another crucial question is regarding the place of Jesus' return. According to the Bible, the exact location of Jesus' second coming will be the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of Matthew contains a significant conversation between Jesus and his disciples that took place on the Mount of Olives, a limestone ridge with multiple summits located just east of the old city of Jerusalem, across from the Kidron Valley. The central topic was the end of the world as they knew it. Sparking the discourse was the disciples' question to Jesus. While Jesus was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this destruction of the temple take place? And what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end, completion, consummation of the age? Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Jesus then begins to discuss his return on that day. He gives this description. Then if anyone says to you during the great tribulation, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear, and they will provide great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect, God's chosen ones. Listen carefully. I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, Look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out there. Or look, he is in the inner rooms of a house, do not believe it. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming in glory of the Son of Man. Everyone will see him clearly. Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 through 27. Jesus will return with brightness, speed, and power that will be seen by everyone on earth. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will flock together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not provide its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And at that time, the sign of the Son of Man, coming in his glory, will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth, and especially Israel, will mourn, regretting their rebellion and rejection of the Messiah. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, in brilliance and splendor. Matthew chapter 24, verses 28 through 30. What will Jesus do when he returns? Scripture provides clues about Jesus' return and his first task upon arrival addressing those gathered to defeat Israel. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 2 tells us, I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured, the houses ransacked. Revelation chapter 16 verses 14 and 16 tells us that the battle on the great day of God Almighty will be in the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The exact location of Armageddon is uncertain, as there is no specific mountain named Megiddo. However, the term is interpreted as meaning hill, and it is most likely referring to the hill country surrounding the plain of Megiddo, which is approximately 60 miles north of Jerusalem. In Zechariah chapter 14, it is mentioned that when Jesus returns to earth, he will defeat a confederation of nations that seek to harm Israel, his beloved nation. The reason God gathers these nations together is so that he can battle them all at once in an effective strategy. Zechariah chapter 14 verses 1 through 2 Behold, a day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you, Jerusalem, 
will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured and the houses plundered and the women ravished. And half of the city will be exiled, but the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. Zechariah seems to have the very end times in view, when Jerusalem will be surrounded and attacked by some type of international force. When the Romans came against Jerusalem in A.D. 70, they came with a multinational army and brought terrible destruction on the city and its people. Yet there was none of the deliverance that Zechariah will describe in the following verses. So it is difficult to say that this was fulfilled in the Roman attack upon Jerusalem in A.D. 70. We read, Half the city shall go into captivity. This attack against Jerusalem will be severe, but the city itself will not be overthrown. The remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Zechariah chapter 14 verses 3 through 5. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fights on a day of battle. In that day, his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives will be split in half from the east to the west by a very large valley, and half of the mountain will move toward the north, and half of it toward the south. You will flee by the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azel, and you will flee, just as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones, believers, angels with him. When it appears that Jerusalem and the people of Israel have lost all hope, the Lord will fight for his people. God is known to demonstrate his power by delivering his people and punishing their enemies. We read, His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west. This passage refers to Jesus, the Son of God, returning in a physical form to earth and standing on the Mount of Olives. When this happens, a great crevice will split the Mount of Olives in two, and the oppressed inhabitants of Jerusalem will escape through the valley formed by the split. The Mount of Olives, also known as Mount Olivet, is a ridge of mountains located in East Jerusalem. It lies to the east of Jerusalem's old city and is named after the olive groves that used to cover its slopes. The southern part of the mountain was the Silwan Necropolis, which was believed to have been used for the burial of the elite of the ancient kingdom of Judah. The western slopes of the mountain that are facing Jerusalem have served as a Jewish cemetery for more than 3,000 years, and it holds around 150,000 graves which makes it significant in the tradition of Jewish cemeteries. The Mount of Olives holds great significance in the life of Jesus, as depicted in the Gospels. It is the place where several crucial events occurred and where Jesus ascended to heaven, according to the Acts of the Apostles. This mount has been a significant site of Christian worship since ancient times, due to its association with Jesus and Mary. The Mount of Olives is a mountain ridge that runs for 3.5 kilometers just east of the Old City, across the Kidron Valley, also known as the Valley of Josaphat. It has three peaks, with Mount Sculpus to the north at 826 meters, the Mount of Olives in the center, and the Mount of Corruption to the south at 747 meters. At Tur, is the highest point on the Mount of Olives, rising 818 meters above sea level. An olive tree on the Mount of Olives is believed to be between 800 to 2,000 years old. The ridge serves as a watershed, and its eastern side marks the beginning of the Judean desert. The Holy Scriptures say, Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. According to Revelation chapter 19, verse 14, 
Jesus will return in glory with all the saints and the armies of heaven and will touch his feet on the Mount of Olives. Revelation chapter 19 verse 21 describes the outcome of the battle where the enemies of God are killed with a sword that comes out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. Simply put, Jesus wins the victory by speaking and it is a decisive one. Where exactly will Jesus stand? After his monumental victory over the attacking nations, Jesus will stand on a specific location. Standing on that very mountain will hold great significance for his followers. Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 10 The first account I made, Theophilus, was a continuous report about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he ascended to heaven, after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given instruction to the apostles, special messengers whom he had chosen. To these men, he also showed himself alive after his suffering, in Gethsemane and on the cross, by a series of many infallible proofs and unquestionable demonstrations, appearing to them over a period of forty days and talking to them about the things concerning the kingdom of God. While well, being together and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he said, You have heard me speak, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized and empowered and united with the Holy Spirit, not long from now. So when they had come together, they asked him repeatedly, Lord, are you at this time re-establishing the kingdom and restoring it to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. And after he said these things, he was caught up as they looked on, and a cloud took him up out of their sight. While they were looking intently into the sky as he was going, two men in white clothing suddenly stood beside them. The world is in need of the return of Christ, but according to the Bible, there will be conflicting messages about when and where he will return. Jesus gave his famous Olivet Prophecy about his return while on the Mount of Olives. The question is, where will he return to? What will be the sign of your coming? The disciples of Jesus were very curious about the future, just like many people are today. Jesus detailed a series of events that would happen before his return. Religious deception, wars and rumors of war, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, persecution of Christ's followers, lawlessness. The good news of the kingdom of God will be preached. Jerusalem will be surrounded with armies and the abomination of desolation will be set up Great tribulation will threaten the existence of humanity. Signs in the heavens. Matthew chapter 24 verses 21 through 22. For at that time, there will be a great tribulation, pressure, distress, oppression, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will again. And if those days of tribulation had not been cut short, no human life would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, God's chosen ones, those days will be shortened. Jesus said that after the tribulation, there will be signs in the heavens, and he will return to the earth with the great sound of a trumpet. Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 through 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call. For a trumpet will sound, 
and the dead who believed in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we will be completely changed, wondrously transformed. In the same way that he left the earth in the clouds, he will return to the earth through the clouds. Many 21st century Christians have been taught that Jesus Christ will come secretly to take the saints to heaven before tribulation. However, the scriptures do not support this theory. According to the Bible, Jesus will return visibly to the earth's surface and not have a secret near return. False Reports of Jesus' Location Jesus explained that before his return, there would be false reports that he had already returned and was in some secret location. He warned us, If anyone tells you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. False Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness. Do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. When Jesus returns, it will be a powerful and glorious event that everyone on earth will witness. His return will not be a secret, but rather, it will be noticed by all the tribes on earth. However, it is surprising that people will not be happy to see their Savior returning. Instead, they will mourn. Where does Jesus go from the Mount of Olives? Jesus will establish his righteous rule worldwide and make Jerusalem his capital, bringing peace and prosperity to all nations. As Micah records, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and peoples shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Micah chapter 4 verses 1 through 2. Pray for Jesus' return, which will be the best news ever. Earlier that day, they had marveled at the impressive stones and intricate workmanship of the temple. However, Jesus had surprised them with a prophecy, and he said to them, Do you see all these things? I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, not one stone here will be left on another, which will not be torn down. However, many nations will be deceived and will gather to fight against the Son of God. Discerning the Signs of the Times Jesus Christ pointed out the importance of discerning the signs of the times. Why did he say this? And what are the warning signs of the end times? Biblical Indicators for Discerning the Signs of the Times Jesus rebuked the religious leaders of his time for failing to recognize the significant events that were happening around them as predicted in the Bible. The Pharisees and Sadducees were testing Jesus, asking him to perform a miracle or show them a sign from heaven as proof of his authority. In response, Jesus pointed out how they could accurately predict the weather, yet failed to understand the prophecies and scriptures. But he replied to them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and has a threatening look. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but cannot interpret the signs of the times. Matthew chapter 16, verses 2 through 3. But what about now? Can we discern the biblical signs of our times? The book of Genesis states that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every thought of his heart was only evil continually. The world then was filled with violence, 
as humans corrupted themselves and God's creation. The people of Noah's time disobeyed God's beneficial laws, which caused them to experience automatic pain and suffering. This caused God to feel grieved in his heart, and he decided to start all over again through Noah and his family. Despite the obvious signs of an impending flood, the people ignored Noah's warnings and lived as if nothing were wrong. Signs of Perilous Times The Apostle Paul also listed signs of end-time attitudes to be aware of in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5. through He warned that people in the perilous last days will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus reassured his followers by stating four times in the book of Revelation, I am coming quickly. Revelation chapter 3 verse 11, chapter 22 verses 7, 12, and 20. Even during times of hardship and suffering, believers can find comfort and strength in the knowledge that Jesus will return soon. However, since God is eternal, his concept of time is different from ours. Therefore, we may wonder if what he calls quickly will be the same as what we consider soon. It's important to consider the signs that God has given us. Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour. It is impossible to predict with certainty when Jesus will return. According to the words of Jesus, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, which implies that even the most knowledgeable individual is unaware of the exact date and time. Instead of focusing on the precise moment, Jesus wants us to be fervent in our longing for that day. Pray for its arrival and be prepared for it. Once we have done all of these things, we should wait patiently for it to happen. What should we be doing now? It is important to maintain urgency and motivation, even if we do not know exactly when Jesus will return. Jesus warned us not to follow the example of the people of Noah's day. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew chapter 24, verses 38 through 39. Preparing for the Second Coming. How can we use our time wisely before the coming of Jesus Christ? According to the Bible, there are certain things that we should do. For instance, we should not let the lawlessness of society weaken our love for God, His law, and other people. Verse 12. We must also endure trials and persecution until the end, through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Verse 13. Additionally, we should help in preaching the good news of the kingdom of God in the end times. Verse 14. Lastly, we should avoid becoming lazy and being influenced by the world. Verses 38 through 39. Why has Jesus' return taken so long? Why has it taken so long for Christ to return? Why have generations of Christians waited patiently and not yet received the promise? Peter says it is because of God's love. The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act, and is not slow about his promise, 
as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 God is working on His vast and eternal plan. He will provide every human being with a chance to repent and change. For those of us who eagerly await Christ's second coming, it is our duty to share the good news of the kingdom of God with others in these end times. Moreover, it is God's desire that whoever hears of it responds positively. However, this is not the only amazing thing that will occur in Israel. What is Israel's role in the end times? Israel, end times, Antichrist, tribulation. Number 1. The Antichrist will make a seven-year covenant of peace with Israel. It is common for people to view any conflict in or around Israel as a sign of the approaching end times. However, this attitude may cause us to become desensitized to the ongoing conflict and miss out on recognizing truly significant events when they occur. It is important to understand that conflict in Israel does not necessarily signal the end times. Throughout its existence, Conflict in Israel has been a constant reality. The Egyptians, Amalekites, Midianites, Moabites, Ammonites, Amorites, Philistines, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, and Romans have all persecuted the nation of Israel and caused suffering to its people. The Antichrist will make a seven-year covenant of peace with Israel. Angel Gabriel himself warns of this Antichrist to Daniel. This man will prevent further sacrifices and offerings to Jehovah by turning hostile against Israel and on the wing of abominations. Number 2. There will be a mass return of Jews to the land of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11 through 13. For the Lord God says this, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd cares for his flock on a day when he is among his scattered sheep, so I will care for my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and gloomy day. I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the streams, and in all the inhabited places of the land. He will be their shepherd and gather them to the land, ruling over them during the millennium. We see God's ministry to his sheep, highlighting the I wills of the Lord God on behalf of his sheep, emphasizing the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. Verse 11, I will search them and seek them out. Verse 12, I will deliver them. Verse 13, I will bring them out. I will gather them together. I will bring them in. Verse 14, I will feed them. Number 3, the temple will be rebuilt in Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 11 verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 through 4 Let no one in any way deceive or entrap you, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first, that is, the great rebellion, the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the Antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed who opposes and exalts himself, so proudly and so insolently, above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he actually enters and takes his seat in the temple of God, publicly proclaiming that he himself is God. Now the apostle explains why they could not be in that day. According to the apostle, Certain events need to take place before that day arrives. 
these events will commence after the rapture. Initially, there will be a falling away or an apostasy. This term refers to a complete rejection of Christianity, where individuals abandon their faith entirely. Number 4. The entire world and Israel will finally recognize Jesus as their Messiah. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 I will pour out on the house of David and on the people of Jerusalem the spirit of grace, unmerited favor, and supplication. And they will look at me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. And they will weep bitterly over him as one who weeps bitterly over a firstborn. The Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah, was the one whom they pierced. Mourning for an only son was the deepest form of sorrow for an Israelite. Number 5. Israel will be regenerated, restored, and regathered. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 8. I will cleanse them from all their wickedness, guilt, by which they have sinned against me. And I will pardon, forgive all their sins by which they rebelled against me. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 17 Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give back to you the land of Israel. In Ezekiel chapter 11, God speaks to the Israelites, assuring them that he will one day bring them back to their homeland and renew their relationship with him. He promises to gather the Hebrew people from the nations where they have been scattered and give them a fresh, wholehearted spirit. Number 6. In the last days, many will go to Jerusalem to worship God. Micah chapter 4 verse 2 contains an interesting prophecy that people from around the world will come to Jerusalem to learn about God. It reads, And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us about his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go forward from Zion, and the word of the Lord, the revelation about him and his truth from Jerusalem. In order to understand when this prophecy will be fulfilled, it is important to identify the context in which it was written. When the Old Testament prophets refer to the last days, they usually mean the tribulation period or the millennium. In Micah chapter 4, the focus shifts from the theme of judgment in the previous chapter to a theme of future blessings in Jerusalem, when God himself will rule. Micah chapter 4 verse 3. This corresponds with the millennial kingdom, during which the Messiah will reign from his throne in Jerusalem. In addition, we will not become bored. Nations and kings will function in a national context on the new earth, bringing their glory and honor into the city. The new Jerusalem will be the pinnacle of everyone's lives on the new earth. And why not, given its magnificence? The Bible actually has many mysteries to uncover. One example is, what animal did God not allow on the ark? To find the answer to that, click here.